Has Nike finally made an all-around cozy running shoe? Today let's explore the Nike React Infinity Run Flyknit 2. Hey, what's poppin'? Jordan Thomas, and today I'll be talking about the Nike React Infinity Flyknit Run 2. I don't know about you, but I was caught off guard with the global release date. I thought that the React Infinity Flyknit Run 2 and the ZoomX Invincible were gonna be available on the same day. And I'll be honest, I was tight. I waited until the next day to order these because I was really excited about the Invincible Run and it wasn't available yet. But I'm happy to report that these are pretty dope. So the quick version of this, if you're looking to upgrade from the React Infinity Run 1 to this one, Definitely do it. If you're looking finally for a max cushion shoe that's got some dope aesthetics to it, do it. And if you wanna get into more details about why I believe that is, let's keep going. Let's begin with the upper. This is where the most changes were necessary in this shoe, and Nike nailed it. They kept the elements that were working, which was a somewhat wide toe box. The forefoot area, they were able to expand it just somewhat Thanks to the fly wire that's there, you get a little bit more play, as well as you have an interconnected tongue that's also padded now, so you have a little bit more of those kind of traditional running shoe elements, along with some padding around the heel collar, the cup, and they kept the pull tab. So that combination of things helps address a bunch of issues that were associated with the last one, and it was just, it was too streamlined. I felt like the shoe was mismatched in that the previous version had like a streamlined upper, but it's very chunky bottom. This one, kind of like splits the difference. It's still somewhat streamlined, but it's got padding in the right areas. That helps create a situation that which you can look at the overall fit, that that toe box is generous. Now when you put the shoe on, you've got some play and the lacing to get it the way you want to. I do still feel like the room in the heel cup could be a little bit more secure, but it's just something to keep in mind if you're gonna pick up this shoe. And so now, when you combine that with the midsole, which remained unchanged from last year, you use that with the wide rocker that remained unchanged from last year, and you got the outsole that remained unchanged from last year, you have a cozy certified shoe. One note with the overall just like React foam, it's highly durable. There's lots of reports out there of people getting 300 plus miles in these shoes consistently. I even have 300 plus miles in my shoe, and I probably could have went longer had I not just started like testing more shoes throughout the year. So in terms of just like a durability, cozy situation, these are it. Now in terms of like how you're gonna get the best use out of these from a performance standpoint, these are an everyday training type shoe. Just throw whatever workout you need to at them. Yes, there's opportunities for you to run faster or potentially run lighter, but if you're just looking for one shoe that's gonna be able to do everything reasonably well, this is the one. In terms of how I've been using it though, I've actually been using it as a replacement to the Pegasus 37, which means that I'm putting in anywhere between 20 and 30 miles in this shoe alone. And then I'll sub in like one other shoe throughout the week. So I've put in well over 50 plus miles in the shoe. Thanks to the traction that's associated with it, you can take this on pretty much any surface you can imagine. I would give you the same advice that I would give like with a Pegasus, which means that you can take it on road, dirt, trail, but I would suggest that you stay away from like technical trails uh, in the shoe. And that just because of this, not only the combination of stack height, but the traction isn't meant for, you know, technical trails. Um, in terms of who would I recommend this shoe? Well, first and foremost, to the person that's looking to upgrade from the previous year's version. The improvements to the upper make this a slam dunk, no brainer. Let's go ahead and do it. Next, I would recommend this for someone that's looking for a general fitness shoe and only plans on buying maybe like one pair of running shoes this year. This one is gonna be able to deliver a number of different things and it's gonna be highly durable. Now I would say skip this shoe if you're looking for a super secure fit or something that's gonna be highly customizable. This is not that. And so for that reason, you may wanna skip it. And I would also say if you're contemplating between getting this and the Zoom X Invincible, you don't necessarily need both of these shoes. So it will likely be one. If you're interested in my thoughts on that, I should have something coming soon. Hopefully the release date uh, becomes more public and then I'll, I'll know what I can go grab me a pair of these. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you loved it, subscribe. That way I know it's real. If you want to check out another running shoe review, check this out. And if you want to check out something else, check this out. I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas. Peace.